I received a very encouraging message from the Lord, which confirms a lot of the diagrams and charts that I've been showing you in the very last series. So if you haven't watched the last series, perhaps you can go and watch it after this message. The message also comes with a confirmation for this message, which is just as equally incredible. As always, I'm here to remind you that the authority is the Word of God, not me. I am simply here to send you back to the Word of God, reminding you that I'm just a man. And we do not follow men or women, but perhaps some are able to send you back to the Word of God, to which you have to compare all things, test all spirits, and go to the Holy Spirit in prayer and make sure that everything lines up with the Word of God. The message I received on January 26, 2023 at 9.44 p.m. Son, I love you. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world, and nothing can separate me from you. Know and understand that time is mine. Moses, my servant, and Aaron in the desert, 40 years. Then I have a vision of the serpent on the stick. And I say, let your will be done, Father. And the Lord says, listen to my words, son, for they are truth and and understanding. I rebuke and correct, and all, in parentheses, things, come from me. Fear not, I am with you all days of your life, and you are protected, for the enemy is at the door. The key that opens is in my hand, and no one can shut, in parentheses, it. Retire now, son, I love you, Lord Jesus, Abba, Amen, Holy Spirit. So in the message, the Lord talked about three things to start. One is, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. The second thing is, nothing can separate me from you. And the third thing the Lord said is, know and understand the time is mine. These three immediately send me back to three scriptures which are directly linked, which I realized the Lord wanted me to read. So let's go to the first one. Be of good cheer sends us to John 16, 33. The Lord says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So the Lord is telling us, I am talking about tribulation. All right, so let's look at the second scripture, which is Romans 8.35. So Paul says, Who shall separ separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? It's talking about the tribulation, the great tribulation. So the Lord points out, something about tribulation. As you can see, the color light green indicates the same content, which is tribulation. The third verse, which is Mark 14, 68, we know it well because it comes from the Peter's denial video, which I encourage you to go back. And in that verse, it says, but he, Peter, denies saying, I know not, neither understand what you say. And he went out into the porch and the cock crew. This is per Peter's denial, which I encourage you to watch it. But the cock cr crowing is likely to be the rapture we talked about in the video. So now let's try and understand how these three starts to come together. So the Lord is pointing out to the tribulation and the rapture happening and probably seeing or pointing out to them happening at the same time or right one before the other. This is exactly important. And you can see the color of the pink representing the rapture line versus the green, the tribulation, as I said. So let's go to the next, the next sentence that the Lord mentioned in the message. So the Lord says, Moses, my servant, and Aaron in the desert 40 years. So I did not understand that verse until last night. And last night, we had the prayer night at our church. And as soon as we walked in, my wife and I, we were a little bit late. That exact moment, 
the pastor that was speaking brought up Exodus 13, verse 21, and he said in his own word, Moses in the wilderness 40 years. So I knew immediately that had to do with the message I received the day before. So I told my wife that, and I started to pay attention to what the pastor was talking about. When we go to Exodus 13, it is the story of Moses clearly in the desert with the Israelites. So verse 13, 21 talks about the cloud. And this is what the pastor was referring to. And it says, and the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of a cloud to lead them the way. So it's a cloud that leads them the way. So we immediately know this has to do with the rapture. But then when we look back into the full chapter, Exodus 13 verse 2 says, Sanctify unto me the firstborn. Whatsoever opened the womb amongst the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. So it's also talking about the firstborn, the first fruits, obviously the bride. And in 13 Six, it says, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. So that was quite amazing. And so that brought me to start doing some more thinking how these two parts, the rapture the Lord is talking about and the tribulation come about. And so in a few a few weeks back, as I was working on some of the other projects, I had asked the Holy Spirit to say, I I would really like to know in the Lord's, Jesus' words, his own words, where we can add the confirmation from his own mouth of the 2,000 years. Because, of course, we know that and we study that well, but it's different in a way if we hear it directly from the Lord. And the Holy Spirit pointed me to Luke 13, 32, and then see what he says. So he says, And he said unto them, the Lord, go you and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils and I do cures today and tomorrow. Those are the two days. And the third day it shall be perfected. So the Lord is really telling with his own mouth, two days I will do work. I will complete my work. Those are the 2,000 years. And in the third day, the millennium, it shall be perfected. And that will be the day of rest. So yesterday... As I was um, doing several things, I received a message from our brother Jimmy, who pointed out a video that challenges people to believe that the rapture either doesn't exist or will happen after the tribulation. This is a big misleading idea. And so, and for all the good points that we know, of course, the rapture is not after the tribulation as before. I did ask the Lord the same question. I said, Lord, Can you tell me with your own words that the rapture happens before the tribulation? In other words, can you point out to me where you said that the rapture happens before the tribulation? And the Holy Spirit sent me to Luke 21, 36. And Luke 31, 21, 36 says, Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That was incredible. It almost brought me to tears. This is the words of the Lord saying, you are being taken out before the wrath. And so when we put these two things together, the Lord himself says, in two days I come back and I will rescue. So the comeback obviously is the second coming. But the rapture will be before all these things are coming to pass. So we want to now pay attention to those two things and the fact that um, I was pointed out back to Moses through the message and through the prayer night with the pastor at our church. So as I was at the church, I was looking at Exodus 13, 21, and obviously the 21 associated immediately with the Luke 21, which the Lord had just told me prior to going to the prayer night. And I was thinking perhaps a relationship. And so the Holy Spirit instead said, look at the reverse, the reverse or the palindrome. And so when we reverse Luke 21, 36, we get 63, 12. And 63, 12, when you look it up into the Bible app, gives you Isaiah 63, 12. 
And Isaiah 63, 12 says, That led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name. That was mind-blowing. And so this is how the Lord connected Moses and Aaron, the 40 days or the 40 years, with what he had told me about the rapture and the tribulation, with the 2,000 years, which means after 2,000 years is returning for the second coming. The rapture is before the wrath, as we said. And here is Moses showing up saying that Moses dividing the water, which represents, of course, the escape, which is represented by before the wrath, be worthy to escape all these things that are coming to pass. So in the message, the Lord also show me a vision of the serpent on the stick. And where is the serpent on the stick? Is in Numbers 21.8. And what does it say? And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looks upon it, shall live. This is again talking about escaping death, being resurrected. Of course, we know what the serpent on the stick is. Uh, means when we start to look at all these pink boxes we understand that this is a representation of the rapture the Lord gives us as it combines with the fact that he comes back after 2,000 years so this confirms the calendar of the last series that we posted on the 46 year temple how because we know the Lord the Lord confirmed one more time that from 31 AD which is the date of the uh, resurrection or, or rather death and then resurrection, cross the resurrection, all the way to 2031, which will make it to 2,000 years as per the adjusted calendar that I posted in the 46-year uh, temple series, the five-part series. That, that tells us that that's the 2,000 years, confirmed right there, okay? Then we're going to know that we're going to, the rapture is going to happen before the wrath, so we're going to have to take out, we're going to count it as seven years for the wedding this comes from the luke 236 anna as we know and so that takes us exactly to 2024 that's 2031 to 2024 but we also know from the series from the 46 year temple that it's from 688 a.d we're going to have to count the 1335 days to come to the blessed hope which is in 2023 this is the window that we have been talking about this is the exact window where the rapture and tribulation is very likely to occur, which is between 2023 and 2024. So this means that the Lord is continuing to share with us his wisdom. He's continuing to letting us know the time is short. And the recommendation here is not to be on your porch looking out, waiting for the Lord to come, but to use this time first to pray always as he just reminded us and also to draw nearer to him with fasting with reading the word comparing everything into his word abiding in him and most importantly to take time and have a ministry a ministry where we can share the gospel with everybody else a gospel is about repentance is about change of direction is about abiding in him is about drawing near to him is about abandoning the world completely we have no more time there's only one priority which is the lord jesus christ of nazareth not the world let go of worldliness let go of distractions they're taking you away from the lord draw near to him Share the gospel with as many people as possible. I thank everybody for your support. Your comments are amazing. And there's incredible revelation that's coming out of a lot of you. I don't get to acknowledge and thank every single one of you with a message or response. But I try to do my best. I certainly absolutely encourage you to continue to be loving and supporting of one the other. This is what the Lord has commanded us to do. I hope you're well and this message blessed you. In Jesus' name. Amen.